In this movie, we'll begin creating our museum project that we talked about in the intro chapter to the course. What I have here on screen is a JPEG of the site that we're going to use for our project. And we got this from Google Maps. And you can see here that we have a fairly large site available to us with a residential neighborhood up to the north and a little bit more medium density developments down towards the south. Now, when we did our preliminary designs, we decided that the building is going to go kind of in the center of the map right here. And we're going to do our main entrance with a nice big long promenade along this direction here. So that raises a couple challenges that we want to get into right away. The first is we want to create our new Revit project and we want to bring this image in to uh, work off of. And secondly, we want to reorient it to match a more convenient orientation for building the Revit model, but maintain the actual direction of north as we go along so that later we can do some accurate shadow studies and so on. So let me switch over to Revit. Here in Revit, I have a file called site.rvt. This is a Revit project file, and we have actually seen a version of this before in the previous chapter. All I've done here is created a topo surface, or actually a series of topo surface objects that match up with that site plan that we were just looking at, that aerial photograph. So the roads here match the shape from the map, and I literally just trace those over that map and then here's the topography. The existing buildings are representational. All of this was built from the aerial photograph. So if I go over here to the site plan, you can see there's that aerial photograph we were just looking at. And I've changed it to wireframe right here so that we can see through the topo. If it's uh, set to hidden line or something, then it covers up everything underneath. So uh, I wanted to be able to see through it first. And you can see here that I've just basically traced over all of the houses and other buildings around just to give us a sense of the context in the surrounding neighborhood. And you can see where the roads and the topo surface match up to the illustration and so forth. Back here in the 3D view, in the previous chapter, we talked a little bit about the difference between massing families versus in-place masses. And these are created just as a simple in-place mass. And so if we click on those and we did edit in place, what you would see is that each of these is just a massing form. If you select it, it's got the control handles and create form, and everything is the same as what we've been talking about in the previous chapter. So feel free to explore that a little bit if you like, but all of that I've provided for you. Now, I will just say that we will have an opportunity to talk about how these houses were created a little bit later on in the course, but here the difference was if we look at these, I actually used existing mass families. So these gable forms are just existing mass families that have been brought in to create those houses. And I found that a little bit easier than actually modeling each one of those from scratch. So there's a portion of our museum that we'll look at that will be using that same basic technique. Now, one last thing that I did here in the file is I've overridden the default behavior. If you watched the last chapter, then you know that normally you have to click show mass in order to see the massing forms. What I did in this view, just this 3D view, is I went to Visibility Graphic Overrides, which you can find in the View tab here, or the VG is the shortcut, VG. And I scrolled down, and I turned on the massing category all the time. So rather than toggling it on and off just when I needed it, if this had been turned off, then you would see that none of those existing neighborhood buildings would show and so I just turned them on all the time so that we would always see the surrounding neighborhood buildings. So what we want to do is we could start building up our form as an in-place mass the same way as the neighborhood was. But again, if you watch the previous chapter, you know that there's some pros and cons to doing that. And it will be better. We will get more flexibility and more control if we actually work directly in the massing environment. So rather than do it as an in-place, we want to create a whole new massing family. That raises an interesting challenge, though. So the first thing that I want to do is do a new conceptual mass, use the conceptual mass template, and I've got that file here. And then I'm going to switch to level one floor plan and zoom out just a touch. And I need to make this match up to what I have in the other project. The challenge is that we can't actually copy and paste directly between a project, which is what site is, 
and the new massing family. For example, if we go to the site plan, I want to make sure that this orientation that we've configured for the site plan matches in the two different views. And in order to do that, I've drawn some lines around here. You can see there's a detail line here and a detail line here, just tracing the rectangle. Now, I can select those lines, but if I do control C to copy them, switch back over to my new family file and do paste either here on modify, paste, usually you'd want to do it this way so you could get paste aligned. But if I say paste aligned to the current view, it will complain that I can't copy between projects and families. That's always been a little bit of a frustration when working in Revit. This is true not just of massing families, but any kind of family. You can't copy between the project and the family. So here's the workaround. I'm going to switch back over here to the site plan. And I need to take these lines and instead of having them in a project, they need to come from a family. You can copy from family to family. So if I take my massing family that I have in this other file or create a whole new one, which actually might be a little bit easier, in place mass. When I do in place mass, Revit will say, you can't create a mass unless masses are showing. Now you might be saying, well, wait, Paul, you just showed me that you turned on masses. I turned on masses in the 3D view only. Masses are still off everywhere else. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept that and mass one is fine because what I'm going to create is a totally temporary massing file. And I'm going to simply select a line here and snap to the corners of this existing JPEG, like so. Select that chain, do control C. So I'm copying from an in place mass, switch back over here to my family and now I can do paste align to the current view and it won't complain because I'm copying and pasting from family to family. So it's kind of a silly little way to do it, but it works around the problem and it allows me to guarantee that the orientation of these two things matches. So I want to show you one more thing in the site file before we continue here. I can just cancel this mass now and discard it because I don't really need to keep that. Over here, you'll notice that Google Maps gave me a scale and it tells me how big this is and I've got these two little lines over here. I use those lines to scale this image and make sure that it was the correct size. So it says that's 85 meters. So I'm going to show you that now. We're going to switch back over here to our family and go to insert and I want to insert an image. It's going to warn me that the imported image won't be visible when I load it into projects. And that's fine. I don't care about it being visible in projects. I just want to use it for reference when I build my mass. So that's perfectly fine. Here's the site file. It's called site aerial JPEG and it's in the exercise files. I'm going to open that up. And for now, I'll just kind of place it off to the side here. You can see there's the image we were just looking at. Now, if I zoom in over here, I know that this represents 85 meters. What I did before was I just drew some lines right on there to kind of match up to that. Looks like I got to nudge that one over just a touch. If you zoom in just a little bit more, you can nudge it a little more precisely. There it is. Remember, you are working on an image, so it's only so precise you're going to get it. I'm going to select this and these two lines with the control key. I'm going to go to the scale command right here. And you can either scale graphically or numerically. So I'm going to do graphically and I'm going to set my first point just somewhere on this line, my next point on this line, and then I'm going to start moving this way. And I don't know if you can see, let me stretch it over so that it's on a white part of the image. You see that dimension right there, 191.6 it says right now? I can type in 85M. If you put in M, it will know that that means meters. Press enter, zoom back out. And now if I measure the distance between this line and this line, it's 278 feet, 10 inches. And if you did that math, that's about 85 meters. So it's pretty easy to get this thing scaled to the correct size. I might be slightly off, but we'll check that out in just a minute. The next step is to move it from its end point here. And you see how it only wants to move this way or this way? 
That's because of this constraint checkbox right here. So I'm just going to uncheck that. That's going to allow me free range of motion so I can move it at both X and Y at the same time. And I'm going to snap to that little rectangle that I drew before. If you want, you can move those lines with it, but it doesn't really matter. I can leave those behind. It doesn't really make much difference in this case. Let me go to rotate. The center point of the rotation starts off in the middle here. I'm going to tap the space bar. That's going to allow me to relocate it. I'll put it right there at that end point. Do my start angle here and arc it down to there. And now you can see it's a pretty good match. Okay. So I've got this image correctly scaled to the right size and oriented in the correct location. And if you want, you can delete these lines. And that gets me in the correct general vicinity, oriented the way that I want to position my building. So now that we have our image all positioned the way we want it to go, and that gives us a good starting point, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is to go in and start adding our levels and any reference planes that we need and building the structure and the setup for us to start creating our massing forms. We'll make that the subject of the next movie.